Hello everyone, this is Liwe Model. I think I did it. I think I found what is potentially one of the cheapest HO-ish scale train set available, maybe even worldwide. So, um, let me show it to you. There it is. So, uh, it's branded under the Montoy brand, simply called Classic Train or Train Classic in French or Train Classico in Spanish. And uh, when I say that this was cheap, this was real cheap. So, first of all, let me tell you where I got this. Did I got this on eBay? No. Did I got this on AliExpress? No. Did I got this on Amazon? No. Um, and uh, all the other sketchy online retailer that provide goods of dubious quality like Wish.coms or other... No! I purchased this in a store. The store is called Dolorama uh, for people not from Canada. Uh, this is pretty much equivalent to uh, a buck or two or a Dollar Tree. So, how much did it cost? Well, that's the uh, most expensive ticket item I have on my receipt here and it's $5. So that's five Canadian dollar, about the equivalent of three dollar US slash three pounds. Uh, so it gives you an idea. And to put things into perspective here, this right here is an Easy Make coupler by Batman. It's a plastic KD knockoff. Uh, it's a knuckle coupler. And this thing was more expensive. than this. So I tried to find a part number, I tried to find that kind of stuff, but yeah, I guess it's too cheap to have its own real part number. However, I found this number here, 08-3116051. Although I do not think that this is really a part number from Montoy, I think it's more like a Dollarama inventory number, because if you look at this, this is just a bowl of instant soup. Uh, it has a similar part number and it has the same equivalent uh, information right underneath. Now, also to put things into perspective, this whole train set here costed as much as four bowls of uh, ramen soup. Yeah. They're a dollar twenty-five each, and I actually have them on the same receipt. If you just look right here. So um, let's look at the box first. There's not much on it on this side. It's just a plastic uh, plastic window here. Um, Dignity train. Okay. So on the back, you have like a close-up of it. So decent uh, computer-generated picture, I think. Uh, if you look at uh, the way the text is written, it's clear that this was not uh, this was not an actual model, it was just uh, you know, very badly photoshopped on it. What is funny here is that uh, they actually make spelling mistake. Instead of saying Rail King, they would say Relj King and uh, yeah, the E.T. train. But uh, uh, if you guys like copyright infringement, there you go. Lake George and Boulders, if you don't know what where that comes from, that comes from uh, LGB, which is owned by Marklin. Uh, it's uh, the mock-up brand that they put on all their uh, uh, G-scale uh, uh, American trains, if you will. Okay, so uh, let's open it up. One of the first thing I noticed is that this thing is excessively light, as you may imagine. And, uh, you know, I think the box is almost half the weight of, <laughs> of the whole train set. So, uh, you know what, talking about weight, let's weight the whole thing with the package in here. 194 grams. Okay, if I had the, plat the cardboard box just for fun, 272. So yeah, <laughs> almost half of it. Okay, get away. There we go. Just to put things in perspective, also I have a similarly sized model power 
HO locomotive. It's also a, a very budget model. And that thing alone is 157 gram, which is as, almost as much as the whole train set, uh, including the tracks and the extra train car. Okay, so what do we have in there? Well, there's obviously no instructions. We've got one locomotive here. which is uh, very, very light, okay? But I suppose if I put batteries in there, it's gonna gain some weight, so at least there's that. No traction tires. Oh, the middle wheel here, they, 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 I'm not even sure that they're gonna turn. So, other than that, we've got some tracks. straight tracks just uh, plastic tracks here with a puzzle end I'm gonna see how that fits later and we've got one train car interestingly the Lake George and Boulder it's not written here we just have some random numbers and uh, if I am to describe how much this feel well, first of all, it feels like it weighs nothing. Secondly, this feels obviously really, really cheap. So, just for fun, make sure it's at zero. Okay. Thirty-one gram. Okay. And what about the loco? Sixty gram. Ooh, almost as much as a home behold world. Okay, so let's do a close-up on this. What do we have on this? Okay, well, first of all, I can see that every single text is different from what we had on the box. I guess it actually made sense, because the other one has probably uh, some form of uh, copyright infringement just pending. Uh, there's no separately fitted part. All the details are molded. I think we may have a light here, we're gonna test it later. And I hope we don't have one of those horrendous uh, sound chip from China. Hopefully they cheapen them. And uh, it seems that you open it with some screws. There's no cap detail. Also, there's no tender. And the car itself. What do we have on it? So, we've got those bright red wheels. They kind of turn. There's no coupler on the back here. So, this has no way to be expanded. But again, five dollars. Wheels, uh, the coupler is just a peg uh, going down. A couple of buffers. The molding on it, it, it's not that bad actually. And again, it just have some random stuff here written uh, that uh, probably means nothing. One thing consistent here is that if you look at both uh, the locomotive and the, uh, the uh, train car, it seems to make a reference to the year 1992. Okay. What about those tracks? Okay. Well, you... Oh, okay. You can actually put them both ways. Let's see if you can... That horrible flashing noise. Okay, okay that, that seems to be fairly well clipped. You're gonna notice that the track is actually ridged somehow. So 
yep, there's like a little ridge on top of it. I guess it's to help with traction. So, let's see. I'm gonna need a bigger play place if I am to assemble the whole thing. So I'll do that a bit later. We're gonna try and have it run. Okay, about the locomotive here, let me go grab a screwdriver. I'm gonna try to put some batteries in it and see if it works, because as you know, those small train sets sometimes, um, they may not work out of the box. So let me go get a screwdriver, I'll be right back. Okay, so, here's a screwdriver. Let's see. Tapping screws, you know, the best kind. <coughs> not. You know when you have a general idea that the whole thing's gonna fall apart if you play around with it too much? Well, that's pretty much the feeling I have right now. So, as this turned out, I am not able to take this off. Let me take a look a bit closer. Okay, turns out that the only screw I had to remove was the one on top here. So I'm gonna remove it. There you go. So this thing requires two AA batteries. So I actually found some appropriately named batteries. There you go, Lada. On a side note, these are actually pretty good batteries. Is that they probably didn't choose the best way to say that these were good batteries. Oh, okay. Uh, some good news and some bad news here. Now that I just put the batteries in there, well, the whole thing started, and there's nothing I can do about it. It just started. I can't stop it. There's no off. So, on a positive note, there's no sound chip in there. And there's actually a light. It does make quite a bit of a conundrum though. Gonna make sure that if I put those screws in there. Uh... Nope, it still makes it. So, uh, by the look of it, this probably goes 800 kilometers per hour. So, uh, let me remove the battery then and uh, I'll put on a little track and uh, try to make it run out. So, I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are with the layout. Layout fully assembled. Um, let me just start off by saying that uh, I have measured how heavy or light this becomes once you put some batteries in there. And uh, mind you, this currently with the uh, uh, IKEA rechargeable batteries, it's about 124 grams, so uh, it's about what you would expect from a locomotive of this size. 
if it wasn't to a uh, you know, proper scale. Now this screw on top, it keeps falling everywhere. So uh, let me just uh, see if I can put this thing on the rail and uh, finally secure this screw. But mind you, once I <laughs> put the batteries in there, as you've seen, it just turns on. So it uh, could be a challenge. Anyway. So let's take the car here and see if it can be put on the rail. does not look very promising. Mind you, this whole thing still costed like next to nothing, so the expectations are excessively low. Okay, let's uh, <laughs> try to do everything at once with the battery. Cover on the batteries. Secure the screw. And now try to fight between the locomotive and the uh, car to make sure that they are on the track. Okay, well, it works. I'm not exactly sure if you can still hear me, but this is very, 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 very loud. The uh, the friction between the tracks and the uh, train, not a pleasant one. But it works. So, is it fit for a purpose? I think it is. One thing I noted though, the car is completely derailed. Okay, that's enough. So again, uh, there's no way to turn this off other than removing the batteries. However, I just wanted to show you, it actually does have a light in front and uh, you know, I wasn't expecting that so I guess that's good. So let me just turn this off and give you my final opinion on it. Silence. Okay, well, first thing first. What can you expect for five dollars? Well, good is that it works. It's a complete system, it has the whole tracks. It has a car. The packaging itself is just a basic plastic tray. But the box is not half bad. Is it fit for purpose? Yes, it works. Does it have a sound chip? I was dreading it did, but I'm happy to find out that it didn't. So I guess that's also something good. Um, now, you can't expect much for, you know, five Canadian or three American dollars. It's, it's 
But again, uh, if I if I just put things again into perspective, the whole train set is as is as expensive as uh, one of the Batman easy coupling. It's also as expensive as four bowl of instant soup. So the expectation on this is very low. But if I am to do a completely honest opinion, even if the expectations are low, um, there's some shortfalls when it comes to this. Uh, first of all, you have not seen it because I did it off cameras, but those tracks, I mean, they are, they are pretty difficult to assemble and to make sure that both sides are equal. Because as you saw, uh, the the car tended to derail, but it tended to derail, especially at the joints when they weren't exactly level. So for a kid, this could probably prove to be a bit of a a bit of a frustration. With the track again, it's nice that you could potentially uh, not only do a circle. Uh, if you have more than one of these sets, you can potentially expand it. And the way that they've designed the puzzle pieces between the tracks, you can actually... You know, you can actually... Put them the other way around. Now those tracks, they're pretty good in terms of uh, once they are put in, they stay in place, but I figured that this is gonna change with time because right now one of the reasons why it's good ironically is because there's a lot of flashing on them and that flashing is what secure things into place but once that flashing is gonna wear out you can expect these to probably be much uh, much looser so it does not have any power switch it's a bit of a struggle to put it directly on the track as you saw uh, so I figured that for a kid, it could probably be a bit of a frustration for them. It makes a lot of noise also, as you see. That noise cannot really be elevated. Uh, it cannot be diminished uh, somehow because the actual noise comes from the ridges on the track and the fact that it has plastic wheels. So the reason the ridges are there is to add more tractions. So if you were to oil it or if you were to sand it down, I don't know how much uh, traction you would lose and would the train still work. But again, this was $5. Like seriously, super, super, super cheap. So can you blame it? Can you blame it to cut corners? I don't think you can. Now there was just one left when I came to Dolorama and uh, people who are familiar with this store, they know that uh, sometimes they just have a bunch of this. So I'm not sure you can still get this. However, um, would I recommend if you are able to see it that you get it? If you have a special purpose in mind? Yeah, you can't, you can't lose money with this. It's basically given away. But if you're a serious collector, obviously, other than the novelty factor, once you get it, you're probably going to lose interest quite fast. So I hope that you've enjoyed that uh, opening review of this uh, Montor Classic Train. And that at least you had a bit of a laugh when you saw it running, as I did. Um, If you have any comments, if uh, you have any other cheap train sets you want me to take a look at that I could access, uh, I actually like that kind of stuff because, uh, you know, it's it's fun, it's different from the very expensive models that uh, now people have. I mean, again, the whole thing was as expensive as uh, if I was to go buy a, 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 what is basically a knockoff KD coupling from Batman uh, called the Easy Mates. So, yeah, it makes a nice change. If you have any other comments, feel free. please feel free to leave them. And on that note, I hope everyone has a very good day. And I'll see you in the next video. Leeway model?